All right, so um, we'll be talking today about how to reverse type 2 diabetes and, um, and how to reverse, you know, as we have people joining in, uh, we're going to be talking about how to reverse type 2 diabetes in three simple habits. I'm going to kind of turn your head over about what type 2 diabetes is and how it's uh, how is that it's gotten such a big problem? And so, you know, if you can think of a time in your life that you were feeling so good and there was unfiltered joy, right? Unfiltered happiness. And there was a time, times in your life that there was, you know, that you were feeling so good. And at any time, you know, I want to make sure that this is a super interactive um, talk. So if any times you have any questions about anything, just jump in here and type it, or I can actually bring you on if you want to discuss anything and if you have any questions. Um, hey, Michael, I'm glad that you were able to make it here. Uh, if you have any questions as we go along, definitely um, jump in. Um, and so, you know, but sometimes in our lives, even though we were feeling so good, we can drift into a job that we don't like, into a body that we keep telling ourselves that we're going to change, uh, and into taking all of these pills uh, that are prescribed upon us. Now, uh, we're here to talk about diabetes mainly, right? There, why is this such a big deal? Well, diabetes is the leading cause of blindness. Diabetes is the leading cause of kidney disease. Diabetes is the leading cause of heart disease. Diabetes is the leading cause of stroke. So it's a pretty big deal. The money spent on it is like beyond what our minds can grasp many times. And then, uh, about 30 million Americans have one in third people have prediabetes. Um, so why is it getting worse? Well, because there's a lot of misleading societal misconceptions. We are told that this is a chronic progressive disease, that it doesn't get any better. Um, also, we know that there is common, the common knowledge lags behind was actually scientific, even within the doctors, uh, even within my community. The advertisement from pharma companies, you know, is huge. Ask your doctor about this pill, ask your doctor about that pill. And that's not necessarily bad, but if that's the only thing we see, we believe that that's the only way to go around it. Also, doctor's education. I was just looking through my slides before I was actually uh, coming on here uh, I was looking at slides that I used to teach medical students with, and it was incredible to realize that my knowledge back then, even as a doctor, was so limited. I thought that the medications were the only way to treat type 2 diabetes, and I'm going to tell you here why that is completely wrong, and I was completely wrong. Uh, and so, you know, what if there was another way? You know, I want you to start thinking about about habits instead of like dietary changes. I want you to start thinking about that. Um, it doesn't matter how much you read or how many events you go to, you, you feel like you haven't been able to make the changes that you need in your life. And so who is it around you that pushes you, who guides you, uh, that motivates you? Um, and so that's what I want to be talking about today, that how important our environment is to be able to overcome this disease. And so, you know, changing our life is changing our environment. And uh, here I'm going to show, show you uh, how to reverse engineer a diabetes-free life with three simple habits. Um, so first I'm going to talk to you and show you how you, there is so much more power than what you think you have. And why is that? It's not just like a wording is, is in reality why your body has so much more ability uh, to overcome this disease than what you think. I'm going to help you understand why the current system is not working. Uh, I'm going to help you understand how you can rely in less medications. Uh, and then I'm going to help you uh, understand how you could actually escape the hamster wheel that this disease can, can cause upon us. Now, I think that the only way to actually overcome this disease is to actually for you to escape the endless cycle of diabetes type two, um, is to actually to look at people who have escaped it already. And I actually haven't heard of doctors talking about this. So 
Uh, who am I? My name is Dr. Zuleta. I'm a practicing medical doctor right now. I run Samasta Academy and I'm the founder of Samasta. I trained in many modalities that I felt that could help people overcome their diseases. Neuro-linguistic programming, shamanism, life coach, health coach, you name it. I've been able to understand and, and learn about it. Uh, I'm an integrative medicine specialist. I've treated thousands of patients all over the world, uh, and I'm also the co-founder of the Wellcare Summit. So I come from Colombia, <clears throat> and there in Colombia, there was a lot of stuff going on at that time when I grew up, which was crazy, as you could as you saw in the previous screen. But also, it gave me a lot of resilience, and that's important in a way to this story because resilience has a lot to do with us being able to overcome this disease. But at the same time, there was a lot of belief systems from my environment. As you can see, that's the picture of Pablo Escobar right there, which is one of the bigger drug dealers in the, the history. And it was so much engraved into our, our society that we started believing that this was the way to, uh, as, as a young man, you start looking up to these um, role models and creating ideas of what um, manhood is supposed to be. And so, I want to touch bases with this of why that is so important that our environment are so important in our stories. I had dreams of becoming a doctor despite everything that was going on. And uh, I worked really hard selling stuff, uh, selling air fresheners in the street of Colombia. And so I worked myself from the beginning and I had to understand what was the mindset that needed to happen to be able to uh, overcome this. And so eventually I became a physician, but it wasn't all easy. You know, I actually, uh, from the outside, everything was, uh, you know, it looked perfect, but actually in the inside, I was partying and having all these behaviors that actually from Colombia, I thought that it was a normal lifestyle, but it caught up to me. And I actually got it, uh, was driving one day and got in a whole lot of, 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 of trouble from driving and drinking. And I was a physician at that time. And so that took me into a whole road of discovery. And so I became obsessed with learning what peak performance is and how human health does it really work and how mindset and addictions, uh, and this is so important because diabetes has a lot to do with how addictions work and how our brain works with addictions. Um, and so in, 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 in throughout of all of these, I came across these places called the blue zones, which are areas around the world where people live very, very, very um, long lives. And also I became across a study that showed that only 7% of the people were thriving in the world. So I, I went on a mission to be able to close that gap and to be able to figure out why so many people were struggling, suffering, and not thriving. So I wanted to figure out how we could get them there. And this is part of why I'm here right now. And so uh, I've, like I said, I started sharing all of this all over the world and I started seeing patients all over the world. I started sharing this in the hospital, in events, but it wasn't all easy. It wasn't easy because a lot of times the content doesn't um, support and the time doesn't support the the content is not supported in many different settings like the hospital. So I had to develop um, plans and programs to be able to help people escape type 2 diabetes. And so, and I want to help you do that in this, in this webinar. So, because just like me, you can overcome diseases. Just like me, you can replace these habits. Just like me, um, you, can develop, you can develop habits that will systematically transform the daily struggles into wisdom. Just like I have reverse engineered the art and science of thriving, you can too. Now, secret number one is how to discover the root of type 2 diabetes without just a Band-Aid diagnosis or Band-Aid pills and use your own endocrine system's ability. Uh, secret number two is how to discern through all the overwhelming diet advice without being tricked by supplement companies or throwing away what you love. And secret number three is how to experience, how to, uh, how to change social experiences uh, that can increase your chances of overcoming type 2 diabetes. As those of you are coming in, I see, uh, hey, Cynthia, I hope all is well. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Secret number one is, okay, so how do we discover the, the root of type 2 diabetes without just putting this Band-Aid diagnosis? Okay, you have type 2 diabetes. And then Band-Aid pills. Uh, and how do we actually use your own endocrine system's ability? 
Now, some people who are looking to escape type 2 diabetes, they think, you know, I don't understand how to get there or how to escape. So I'm going to tell you a little story. I had a patient in the emergency room that came into the emergency room and she actually uh, had a lot of problems, obesity, diabetes, depression. And I asked her, hey, have you always been this uh, sick before? And she said, no, actually, I haven't. It was until I had this severe relationship breakup when I was in my 40s and it really took me down. After that, I lost all my self-worth and I started eating, overeating. I became addicted to food and then that led me into this, the condition that I'm in. And so why is this so important? Well, this is not just her. There is actually something called adverse experiences uh, and there is studies that show that when we have abuse, emotional, physical, sexual abuse or household challenges such as uh, mother was treated violently, substance abuse, mental illness, separation, divorce, when we were small and also throughout our adulthood, it actually increases our chances of having diabetes about 1.6 times more. And so for her, this is exactly what happened. She was okay, but as soon as she had some traumatic experience, this actually turned her into the habits that were self-destructive and then leading for her diabetes. And so pretty crazy, right? Lung disease gets increased, heart disease, and diabetes is the uh, type, uh, the worst um, causative agent of cancer. You know, you might also be thinking that I don't understand how this can help me reverse engineer peak health. Well, the truth is that about 80% of chronic disease can be prevented. And actually, there was a study done uh, that is called the Nurses Health Study that showed that about type 2 diabetes can be prevented 91% with three simple things. But I want to explain to you why that doesn't happen in our current healthcare system. Well, in our current healthcare system, somebody goes in with a heart attack, and then we can do all these tests that show them, that show the muscle of the heart is dying, and then we can do even more tests. Uh, and then we can give them pills and treatments and even surgeries. But then the patient goes home and they don't know what happened. They don't know why they got the heart attack. They don't know that the leading cause of heart attacks is actually diabetes. They don't know that. And so now there is something changing in healthcare, right? Uh, and it's a paradigm that looks at the whole picture. As you can see, our world has different uh, temperature changes, right? And these temperature changes actually cause different environments and pro, uh, puts us at an increased risk of having certain diseases. Cities are the same way. If you live in a city, you have a lot of different health markers than people who live in other cities. I mean, there are life expectancies, for instance, in this country that go 80, 90 years old, and in other countries, are like 40 years old. And so just the fact that you were born in the city that you were born, there are different, um, that will impact your health in different way. Our communities impact our health in different ways and even our jobs. It's showing that actually Mondays are the highest likelihood of us having a heart attack and Tuesdays and Wednesdays also. It's called the Monday effect. So this is what I want you to be so uh, in line with what you see, what you hear, what you touch, what you smell, what you taste. And all of these senses have been incredibly impacted uh, because everything that a lot of the stuff that we uh, consume in the world um, increases our chances of having type 2 diabetes. What you hear, you know, somebody tells you that type 2 diabetes is a chronic progressive disease. You don't think you can overcome it. Uh, so. That's what I want you to think about. So I want you to think about a paradigm shift, and I want you to think about this disease in a biopsychosocial manner, meaning we're going to look into our biology, into our psychology, and into our social uh, environments and our settings. Um, and so the root of disease, we know that 7 out of 10 deaths are because of chronic disease, and we know that if somebody changes their diet, if somebody changes their physical activity, and if somebody decreases tobacco or any other toxins going into their body, they have a high likelihood of actually overcoming these diseases. So why is it that we cannot do it? Well, if you know, uh, as you can see, type uh, the normal uh, body in our left is actually a, no, a normal body. Let's take the sugar. The sugar is those little balls in the blood 
cream. And the little uh, uh, stripes of green stripes, that's the insulin. Think of insulin like a key that allows the sugar to be used in our bodies. So um, in type 2 diabetes, the key has been so used that it doesn't work anymore. You have it there, but it doesn't work anymore. So we got to get the key to work again. And there are ways that we have been shown to, uh, to do that. So that was secret number two, that you, know, you have so much more power than what you think you do. About 86% of the people can overcome type 2 diabetes. And so now we're going to talk about secret number two, which is a diet. Um, so what is the real diet that helps uh, people with type 2 diabetes? Well, I know that you've probably heard of a thousand diets, but I want you to think about these diets and see if you've heard of them. The paleo diet, the ketogenic diet, the orange diet, the blue zone diet. So think about any one of these diets uh, and see if you've heard of them. Well, you have, okay. Uh, and then, you know, and you might be thinking right now from the psychological perspective that you're never going to get rid of this because you, you're not good at following diets uh, and you don't even know if you do that diet, it will work for you. But let me share you a little story, right? There was a study. First of all, I used to think just like you that type 2 diabetes was an irreversible thing. Uh, and many doctors still think that to this day. I had a conversation about months ago with a doctor who didn't believe that type 2 diabetes was reversible. And so even doctors still don't understand this. And remember, the word medicine means appropriate action. When you look at the, at the root word medicine, that's what it actually means. It doesn't mean a pharmaceutical. It means what are the habits that we need to do to actually restore our health. And so the story that I want to tell you has to do with all of that because the story that we've been told is that type 2 diabetes is not reversible. But we can see here in this study done in Ireland, very recent, this is one of the most recent studies, that almost half the people achieved remission of type 2 diabetes and came off the drugs. And so they said in this study, look, it is a practical target for primary care to actually have their patients shoot for being able to get away and escape type 2 diabetes, to become type 2 diabetes free. And so, but the, the crazy thing, this doesn't go into our common knowledge. So if you have two ty type 2 diabetes right now and, and you're trying to get rid of it, like this should be your goal to actually get rid of it. This should be your goal because you can some people who are looking for extraordinary health also think, you know, I can't do these diets, I cannot do these diets. So I want to share with you the concept of bioindividuality, which is everything interacts differently with you. That's why I don't want you to think about diets. I want you to think about habits. And this is the first habit that I want you to think about, the habit of bioindividuality, meaning that you try things for yourself. I'll explain this study right here. This study showed that if they give one person, person A, a banana, and they gave person B the same banana, these two people reacted completely different to that banana. Their sugar grew uh, completely different. That was directed to their microbiome, to bacteria that lives in our gut, right? Which is fascinating, and this is probably going to uh, it's almost like a groundbreaking experiment because it allows us to realize how in individual we are, right? And so the bioindividuality habit is like, look, if you don't give up, keep trying, and you will hit the thing that will work for you. So just keep trying, right? The second thing I want you to think about is crowding out. Crowding out means I don't want you to eat less, I want you to eat more. If you think of your stomach as an elevator, you can only feed so many people in there. So I want you to eat as much as you can of high fiber, high vegetable, high real food, meaning wild food, fruits, vegetables, food that you know where they are coming from. And then the last habit that I want you to think about is 95.5, that 95% of your food comes from um, fruits and vegetables. Why is that? Am I pulling just, am I just pulling that out? Not really. 
in the blue zones right here, which is the area around the world that they live the longest without diabetes, without chronic diseases, the studies show that this is what they do, about 95%. They are not very strict about like eating meat or anything like that, but it's drastically reduced. It is drastically reduced, and their sources of that meat are very organic and wild sources. So that's why it's so important for you to keep that in mind, the 95-5 guide. And so that's why it's so important. Now, the third principle I wanna show you is actually how to reverse the social experiences and then turn them into your own benefit. I want to tell you a story. There's a patient that came into the hospital, and uh, I'm a practicing doctor at the hospital, and I see patients that come in like this all the time. But this is just one of them that's stuck in my mind. And I could not get his sugar down. We had to use so much insulin, and he was so sick. He came in so sick, so, so sick. He could barely walk. He was so lethargic and tired and peeing all the time. Uh, but I couldn't get it down. And I was using a ton of insulin. And then I went into his room and after talking to him, I saw this little guy sitting right next to his bed. And I was like, I was just talking to him and, and then he was saying, yeah, my family brought this, I'm sick in the hospital. So they were thinking they were helping him. Uh, and then I looked in the back and this thing has like 60, 56 grams of, of sugar. So um, pretty crazy, right? And so then I was like, wow. And he was drinking like three of these a day. And so then when I started diving deeper into all of these, a lot of our foods have this amount of sugar, but they're not called sugar anymore. They're called uh, syrups and they have so many different names. And, and, and it's important to put them in food because it, it increases our likelihood of rebuying of buying more because sugar is seven times more addictive than cocaine. It puts us, uh, it goes right into the pleasure centers of the brain and uh, it creates a lot of problems actually. So can we do this in a larger scale? Absolutely. If you look at the country in Finland, they actually did a study where they showed that they were actually able to decrease about 57% heart attacks in men between 35 to 64. And how did they do it? Well, they talked to, um, they talked to their supermarkers, their doctors, their dietitians, uh, and, and they did as a collective, they did all of this around the country. And then because their results were so good in five years, they actually extended it to 20 years and they showed that they were actually able to reduce it by 75 percent pretty crazy right so why is it so important that i showed you this story as soon as i told that patient to stop having this drink and that drink was taken out of the picture i actually was able his sugars came right down and uh, i was able to help him and so that's what pattern interruption is because it breaks the chain Something has to be done. And so that's why it's good to take like four, 10 days to do something. You know, I'm going to do something for these 10 days, for these 14 days. I'm going to pattern interrupt. I'm going to take this habit, take this habit, take this habit, and, and, and interrupt it. Um, and so remember that the root of, of diabetes is a psycho, uh, a bio, psycho, social root. All these three things have to be dealt with to be able for you to, to break through this disease. Um, so, you know, if you're one of these people that, you know, I'm not sure if you're really sick right now and, and you're feeling the, the burden of this horrible disease, um, people come to listen to this information at that point, or people are just confused. Part. Like I had a patient that, uh, came off of all the medications and he ended up in the emergency room because all he was eating was fruits. So he, he made things worse. And so you cannot only eat fruits. Um, people are just so tired and exhausted of hearing people like me talk and people, dietitians and chiropractors and other doctors that haven't really figured out exactly or just at the office, like, hey, just do this. 
And then there's people who come here and they're like seeking, like they, 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 their health is okay, but they just want to take it to the next level and they need guidance as to how to do that. So, um, so today I showed you how to use your own system to be able to actually tap in into diabetes and, 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 and overcome this disease and why that's possible. I showed you how to discern through the overwhelming diet and think about habits instead of um, diets. And then I show you how the experiences that you're having socially can have such a big impact in your life. Um, any questions right now that, that you have? Any questions regarding anything? Some people ask me, um, for instance, you know, what's the, what's, what's, what's the shortest amount of time that I can do something on that um that can that can help me and i mean as as soon as like you what like what you saw with that guy i mean just a day of, of having a pattern interruption can bring your sugars down drastically so um doing something for an a, a one day two days three days i mean if you can get it up to 10 and 14 days you're gonna really start seeing amazing results and then Really, the best thing is after that, uh, doing a three-month uh, trial so that you can check your hemoglobin A1C uh, to be able to make sure that, um, that that goes down and that what you're doing is working. That's the main thing I'm, uh, you know, I want to focus on, that you know, check to see if what you're doing is working. That's the most important thing. In the hospital, we have to check. Uh, stuff every day because we want to make sure that the patients are actually getting better. So if you're trying something out, test on yourself, test on yourself, test on yourself. Um, and so uh, if you have any questions, uh, any other questions, don't hesitate to ask them. Uh, I'll be more than happy to, uh, to answer those questions. Um, and you can also find me uh, on the social media or through the emails. Uh, and if you're interested uh, in more of this information, please let me know that way I can uh, keep pulling it out. Okay, so, so I'll close this uh, event. If you want more uh, information on it, please don't hesitate to ask. If I didn't cover anything at this time, don't hesitate to ask. Uh, you can just send me an email through the emails that I sent you today, and then I'll respond to that. Okay, well, until next time, uh, Dr. Zuleta here, and I hope you have a wonderful uh, day.